Hey guys, and welcome to the Android and Kotlin multi-platform developer roadmap for 2025. So this video, I will give you a clear roadmap, a clear path of technologies that you can follow in 2025 to become ready for the industry as a mobile developer who is interested in Android and Kotlin and Kotlin multi-platform. Because if you're interested in mobile development in general, I think there are three viable technologies nowadays that you can pick for that. On the one hand, just native Android or uh, native in general, Kotlin multi-platform and Flutter. So with one of these picks, you can do anything wrong in 2025. I would personally ignore technologies like React Native, Ionic, Xamarin. There is a lot of legacy around these technologies nowadays, but all in all, they are just not really good. And also it's really important for me to say here when you're watching this roadmap video, that roadmaps are not strictly meant to be followed from A to Z, at least in my opinion, because I feel like most people really misunderstand how roadmaps should be used, because I really see this a lot from beginners. They want to learn a technology, mobile development, for example, they search for a roadmap and then really just research about topic A. After they've learned that, research about topic B, C, and so on. But that way you will kind of learn these topics, but you will not learn how you can use these to really build a solid project, build a solid app. So all in all, roadmaps are great to give you an idea of which topics are out there and which topics are important for a certain field, for a certain technology. But you will really have the best learning experience when you take a roadmap as kind of a rough guide to get a general feeling for what's out there and what makes sense to learn in which order. But in between, it's so important to keep on building hobby projects, to keep on applying the concepts from roadmaps. Because if you don't go through the struggles that you will have to go through when building hobby projects, when applying certain technologies, then well, you, you might know what a database is in theory, but if you can't really use that in a project, that knowledge is worthless. So keep that in mind when watching this video. Also in this video, for every single technology, for every single part of the roadmap that I will share here, I will link clear playlists or videos down below, which you can then follow through on my channel to just learn that topic. And one more thing before we will dive into the actual roadmap, the actual path that I suggest you to follow, because I know that now that a new year has started, lots and lots of developers have clear goals regarding their career. Maybe you want to find a job, maybe you are already in a job, um, but you don't really know how to advance there. That is why I've taken my friend Thomas, who runs a company here in Germany, who has lots of employed mobile developers and who has a company that takes on other companies' app projects and develops these. Because what that means is that Thomas has had over 400 job interviews on both sides. So on both the employer side, as well as the side of being interviewed. And that really makes Thomas the go-to guy when it is about mobile development career advice. And with him together, I have now recorded a dedicated video portal with 12 videos on everything that matters to get a well-paid job as a mobile developer. So that means you get videos on writing a good CV, on all kinds of different coding interviews, how you best prepare for these, on take-home assignments, how you solve these best, um, how you find work as a junior developer nowadays in the competitive industry, how if you actually are already in a junior developer position and you want to advance to a senior and a lead developer position. So lots and lots of video content from someone who is really, really deep into these current industry trends. This video portal is available exclusively for members of the Mobile Dev Campus, where a new section unlocks on a monthly basis. In case you don't know what the campus is all about, just in very, very short, it's inside a community of mobile developers. I am active there, so you can always ask your questions, be it about technical stuff, be it about career stuff, and you get access to monthly coding challenges, so you get professional design mockups, requirements, for example, and for an alarm clock app, for a meme creator app last month, this month it's an audio journaling app, which you can then build in order to learn mobile development and then use for your portfolio. And for seven days from when this video comes online, you can get 50% discount on the first month of your subscription, you can cancel this at any time. So if this is something you would like to try out, now is the best chance to do so. Link is below. So coming to the actual roadmap that I suggest you to take. As it is for any type of technology, be it web development, be it mobile development, the absolute fundamentals, what always comes first is the programming language you have to use in order to build what you want to build. And if we're talking about a roadmap for native Android and Kotlin multi-platform, well, then guess what? The programming language we talk about is Kotlin. So if mobile development is something you want to learn and you have no idea of anything yet, then start with a learning Kotlin. I will link down my Kotlin Newbie 2 Pro playlist, which is a bit older, but these kinds of playlists actually don't get outdated at all because language features also don't get outdated. So learn Kotlin first, because without knowing the programming language, you can't do anything. Maybe if you're new to the Android world, maybe you're also thinking whether to use Java for Android development, because many people might already know Java, maybe from university or so. But believe me, I have this channel now for five years, 
Five years ago, when I started this channel, Android development was already Kotlin first. So Google made this Kotlin first. Google said Android development should use Kotlin and still people ask me whether they should use Java for Android development. So if you're just a tiny bit serious about Android development, learn Kotlin. If you want to get into Kotlin multi-platform, well, then as the name says, you have to learn Kotlin. But most modern technologies around Android development just use Kotlin nowadays. So, so there is not even a way anymore to use Java for these. And with that, we come to technology number two. So the second part of our roadmap that is already Kotlin exclusive, and that is Jetpack Compose. Jetpack Compose is pretty much the way how we build modern Android UIs and Kotlin multi-platform UIs. It's entirely based on Kotlin. So you just write Kotlin code in order to describe how your UI looks like. And that luckily also works with Kotlin multi-platform. So there is Compose multi-platform as well. Kotlin multi-platform is just the, the technology itself that allows us to develop for multiple platforms with Kotlin. And Compose multi-platform is kind of a, a sub part of that that allows us to just also share the UI code by writing Jetpack Compose code in a Kotlin multi-platform project. So regardless of whether you want to dive into native Android or Kotlin multi-platform, learn Jetpack Compose. For that, I have a 50-minute crash course here on YouTube, which really goes over all the basics. Check that out. It will prepare you for building basic UIs. If you want to master Jetpack Compose, then I will also link my Jetpack Compose Masterclass course there, which is, I think, 13, 14 hours of video content just about Jetpack Compose. Coming to part number three of our roadmap, and that is learning the basics of the SDK you want to develop for. And here for Android development specifically, that is just the Android SDK. So you should just learn about those types of programming concepts that Android specifically introduces. So I'm talking about concepts like activities, um, what is an intent, what are broadcasts, what is a service, um, how can you actually use resources in your Android project. So this topic is specific to native Android development, but if you develop KMP apps with Kotlin multi-platform, then it's likely you will also target Android as one of your platforms. And sometimes you just have to write platform-specific code. So code about something where the implementation details just differ depending on the platform you develop for. For example, notifications work differently on iOS than they work on Android. So you would have to learn about notifications on both Android and iOS in order to implement these in your Kotlin multi-platform project. That is why I also suggest you to learn these Android basics if you want to dive into Kotlin multi-platform, since sooner or later you will have to deal with these. And same, of course, counts for the iOS side if you want to develop for iOS. In order for you to learn the Android basics, I will, of course, also link my Android basics playlist down below, which will teach you all these very important and fundamental technologies about Android. Coming to the roadmap part number four, and that is asynchronous programming. That is a concept you really won't get around in any type of software development field because it's all about executing code that may take a while to complete. Be it a network call, be it some kind of database query, or be it loading some kind of large file from the file system. And in 2025, in modern Android and KMP development, there is really no way around coroutines in order to achieve asynchronous programming. So coroutines are a Kotlin-specific language feature, and therefore you can always use these when working with Kotlin code. And they are just a very natural and I think easy to understand way to, to implement asynchronous programming to execute of functions that may take a while to complete. You can go really, really deep into coroutines, and there are definitely quite some traps you can step into, but the basics of them are quite easy to learn. I have a playlist for them, which I will link down below. If you want to master these again, I have a complete dedicated coroutines and flows masterclass course, which I'll also link down below. Now the next parts of our roadmap actually make use of coroutines, and that is on the one hand databases, local databases in your app. Because in the moment where you have to save some structure data in your app, be it a list of nodes, be it a list of to-dos, be it a shopping list app, be it some kind of app that saves images and image references, then you just have to save that structured data for which we use databases. And when it is about the technology I would recommend here, my suggestion is again pretty clear, and that is go for SQLite, so an SQLite database in combination with a Room framework. So Room is a library from Google that is also compatible with Kotlin multi-platform nowadays. And that is pretty much just a layer on top of the raw SQLite code that makes it very, very easy for us to work with an SQLite database in our code. And for that, I will also link my Room Crash course down below. Next up, we have a different topic, but equally important as databases, and that is you should definitely learn how you interact with REST APIs, with remote APIs. So where you have some kind of remote server your app needs to communicate with and then actually fetch data that you can then display in the app. Because if we think about an app like Instagram, then obviously the feed that you see in your Instagram app 
needs to come from somewhere and that comes from the backend. So some kind of remote server that decides about which user should see which posts and these apps then make the request to the server which answers with the posts that uh, should be displayed for that particular user. And the mobile app then really just takes that raw data and displays it in a nice way. That's already a really, really big part of mobile development, by the way. To give you a clear suggestion of which framework, which library I would definitely pick as my first choice nowadays in 2025, go for Ktor. So Ktor is the networking library, the networking client that comes straight from JetBrains. So the same makers that are also behind uh, Kotlin as a programming language and Kotlin multi-platform. And that is also why I would pick that nowadays, since on the one hand, it's the only really viable networking client that is currently compatible with Kotlin multi-platform, but also because it's just really easy to configure. I know for native Android, there are also other viable picks like Retrofit, but Retrofit is based on Java, so we can't use that for Kotlin multi-platform, which is why my clear suggestion here is using Ktor, no matter if you go for KMP or native Android. It is simply the more future-proof technology. And of course, I will link down my Ktor crash course. Step number seven of our roadmap is basic dependency injection. So dependency injection is really mostly about passing objects to objects. So passing around instances of classes in your code. And the most simple form is really just passing these to constructors, but it's a design pattern after all that makes your code pretty scalable and pretty easy to test. So it's definitely an, an architectural pattern or um, a design pattern that I would never skip. Most people overcomplicate this topic because as I said, in its core, it's really just passing stuff to stuff. But for mobile development, we have some really established frameworks that can make this a bit easier to work with your dependencies. So with the instances of classes in your code, like a database client, a networking client that you need to pass around. So my recommended choice here for such a framework is definitely COIN. COIN is a dependency injection framework that works again, both for KMP and native Android projects. And it is, in my opinion, the easiest way to implement dependency injection nowadays. If you're a native Android developer, you will often also stumble over Dagger Hilt, which can also be used for dependency injection. And maybe at some point this can also be used for Kotlin multi-platform. But honestly, for, for quite a while, I have been using Hilt and it's quite unnecessarily complex, I think. And I think if you learn Dagger Hilt as a beginner, then this quickly gives you a different idea of what dependency injection is and makes you think it's more complex than it needs to be. Because with Hilt, you will have to deal with lots of compile time issues with annotations where beginners often struggle to understand these, why these kinds of errors exist, which is why my clear pick nowadays is to go for coin. I also use that for any of my projects because it's just the most simple way to get started with dependency injection. And of course, coin crash course is down below. So now with these seven technologies, you already have a pretty good foundation of what you need in pretty much any type of mobile app. Because just go through a few mobile apps that you have in your mind that you know and think about what types of technologies these might need because most of these will definitely require a database and or need to talk to, to some kind of remote server with a REST API. Then all of these have to be architected in some sense, have to be designed so that the code base also scales. All of these have to probably add some asynchronous code, have some kind of blocking calls. So with what I've shared up to this point, you are already on a pretty solid foundation. But architecture, what I just mentioned, is what comes next. So these architectural design patterns here are really all about structuring your code base in a way that's on the one hand consistent, so that you uh, structure all parts of your code base in the same way that possibly new people in the team would also know how to extend parts of the code base. It's an architectural design pattern, makes it easier to extend the code base, makes it easier to test the code base and just understand it in the first place. So when you open a code base, then having a proper structure, a proper architecture, this just makes it so much easier to understand what's going on and where you have to make certain changes. For Android and Kotlin multi-platform, the two most viable and common architectural design patterns here are MBVM and MBI. If I would have to give you one video suggestion of mine that teaches you these architectural design patterns, then it would be my uh, Compose Multi-Platform Book App course. So that's a crash course that I recently published, which is, I think, five and a half hours long here on YouTube, completely for free, which really focuses on these architectural aspects, specifically on MBI and how you can use that to just build a book app. So where we talk to some kind of remote book API, where we can search through books, display book covers, and so on. Of course, I will link that down below. So if you want to learn that, check out this course. And the last part of the roadmap that I want to go over here will be reactive programming. So reactive programming is all about writing reactive code so that when a certain value changes, you automatically set, send that change, maybe that new piece of data, to a pipeline of processing steps to get to a different result. 
For example, whenever your email text changes that you automatically validate the new email text, save the result in another state that you can observe whether it's a valid email, for example. And this concept of reactive programming in Kotlin and Android is just typically implemented with Kotlin flows. Kotlin flows are again based on coroutines. I will link down my Kotlin flows playlist here. And if you really want to dive into the topic, you can also learn that in my coroutines and flows masterclass. And if you learn these nine topics and really understand these, so again, don't just learn these step by step. Don't just go through all those videos that I will link down below, but learn one topic and then take that topic and apply it in an actual project. Build a mini project, maybe build a little calculator, build a little note app after you've learned about databases. Build a little, I don't know, some kind of app that maybe loads some sample data from a REST API. There are tons of lists of free APIs you can find online and actually practice with these. But do that. You won't become a good app developer by just binge watching all these videos from A to Z and not doing anything with these. And of course, this roadmap is not 100% complete in order to know every single corner, every single aspect of Android and Kotlin multi-platform development. But if you follow through this roadmap, it will bring you to a point where you can easily extend your knowledge by just research. Because the problem most beginners have is that they aren't strong in their fundamentals. And if you're not strong in your basics and your fundamentals, then you will have a hard time extending your knowledge because you often struggle to understand documentation because you often struggle to understand certain error messages and that way just feel completely lost. But if you have these strong fundamentals and you know what these are really about, if you know them in depth, then extending your knowledge is really just like learning vocabularies. You will, for example, learn about a specific system API. If you maybe want to learn how to get into working with sensors of, of your Android device, then you would just have to research about working with sensors. You would see some sample code and because you are strong in your fundamentals, you could easily just take that code and apply it to your needs in your specific project and also implement that with a solid architecture. And if you're actually really, really eager to start learning with this roadmap, then I want to invite you to a challenge. I want to invite you to the 100 day industry ready developer challenge. And I can already say this challenge is really only for those of you who really want to change something about their career in 2025. So if you say, you're unhappy with where you're at, if you maybe want a job but struggled to get a job in the past month, if you are in a job but it's not really what you want, what you, what you dream about, and you're really eager and committed to change something about this, then participate in the following challenge. So first of all, take the roadmap from this video as a guide to know what to learn next learn these things with realistic hobby projects, as I mentioned, and you build one project a month that somehow implements the new technologies that you've learned about. So one project could put focus on local databases. Another project could put focus on interacting with remote APIs. And another project could just use all of those technologies together with reactive asynchronous programming to really make sure you've understood it at all. And you commit to this for at least two hours a day without excuses. And you then do this over 100 days, every single day. You will be surprised how much can happen in such a rather short time. Of course, as I said, if you are in the campus, then you can just build the monthly challenges for which you get the mockups. You can learn with a new video course to, to learn about how to write a CV, how to nail coding interviews and so on. But if not, you can also just get some inspiration, for example, from websites like Dribbble and use that to build something. That is what's most important. Do something. You have to learn and practice. And yes, it will be hard. Yes, there will be days where you don't feel like coding, where you don't feel like putting in those two hours. And that's normal. There are also people who like going to the gym and even they have days where they don't feel like going to the gym. But what counts is whether they still do it. So if you say you really, really want to change something, commit to this challenge for the next 100 days and you will learn more than what most others learn in a whole year. Again, if you want me to help you with that goal, check the link to the Mobile Dev Campus down below. As I said, first month, 50% off only until next Sunday from when this video comes online. You not only get access to me and my team, but also to more than 300 other committed mobile developers who are on the same road as you are. You get exclusive video content. You get those monthly coding challenges. You can actually win prizes and rewards. You can win actual money by participating in those coding challenges to just keep this whole process motivating. Check this out. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think about this roadmap. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.